Andrew, how did you come to be drawn in by flower remedies? Well, Rebecca, I've been a GP for nearly 20 years uh, and I've tried to practice the best of orthodox medicine, but there are lots of complementary ways in which we can be helped. I think as we walk around, uh, what we get is, is a sense of harmony and a sense of peace, a sense of something that's very nicely rhythmically smooth and gentle and supportive. Um, smooth is something that many people can understand because the opposite is, is jangly and sometimes things clash against how we feel. So it's the smoothness and the peace that we find in nature, in a garden or elsewhere, that can help us rebalance and retune. In medicine we try and cure um, people's bodies and help them with that, and that's what we learn at medical school. But people aren't just bodies, they're minds, emotions, um, thoughts and feelings as well, and personalities. And if we can help people be more in balance with gentle tuning forks, then they just respond better, they feel better, and we do know scientifically that if you feel better, you heal better. There are patterns throughout nature. They're most obvious in particular flowers, but they're there in leaves and they're there in trees, in symmetry, in round patterns, and in all sorts of ways. I think one of the interesting things is that very often they are based on precise mathematics. If you use a tuning fork, uh, you'll find that middle C is exactly 256 hertz. And in the same way, it's quite likely that the mathematical patterns in nature produce precise information and vibrational quality that is captured in an essence. Although the remedies are giving us something, throughout uh, history we've been inspired by plants, haven't we? I think you're right there. Um, nature has inspired some of the greatest poetry that we've had, some of the wonderful artwork, and even uh, churches and cathedrals, those wonderful rose windows and great tall windows that we have in churches, uh, are just imitations of nature at one level. Dr. Edward Bach in the 1930s um, developed his system of flower essences. But the healing power of flowers has been known from time immemorial, and it's thought that the Egyptians actually used them for um, healing purposes. And certainly, Aborigines and other native cultures use flowers a great deal. Do you think there's really something in it? I think there's something very exciting in it. In the same way that music can often soothe our soul, I think harmonious patterns from nature do something very deep for the human psyche. After all, we've been on the planet for millions of years, or our ancestors have, living amongst nature, and it's perhaps as though our software programs are tuned to rely on or to be supported by vibes from nature which just help us get through. Uh, and the work of Dr. Bach and other people since has shown quite excitingly that specific vibes from specific plants seem to catalyse the resolution or support the resolution of specific frames of imbalance, specific patterns of imbalance. And I truly believe that, certainly in my experience, for me and for many friends and patients, 
that flower essences can help resolve some of the issues that we're carrying. Andrew, this is a snake's head fritillary. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Such pretty markings, aren't they? Absolutely. I wonder what that does. Now, there would be people who can just sit with that and tell you how it makes them feel. And different people, it'll make them feel different things. Curious, isn't it? So do you think you could make a flower essence using that, then? Oh, yes. Absolutely. That would be an interesting one to make. I'm not sure anyone has made one of those yet. Mm -hmm.